Hi friends. Today I'm going to share with you my DEXA scan results. Now this is my three year follow up after my first scan showed osteopenia in both of my hips. Now this is a report that I will review with you. I'll show you what to look at as you review your own report and what it means in the context of this test, whether a change is actually meaningful or not meaningful. So that's very, very important. And I'll also share with you briefly what I did in the last three years to create the change that I was going for. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Lisa. I'm a physical therapist and an osteoporosis exercise specialist. I'm also a cancer rehab specialist, and it's working with clients who've had breast cancer who I know have increased risk for osteoporosis and fractures, the reason why I think it's so important to teach about bone health behaviors. So let's take a look at my scan here. So in this very first section we're going to show you, it shows what's normal and what's not normal. And it goes through each level, the AP spine, the left femoral neck. So the AP spine was normal. They only do the lumbar because the ribs are in the way for the thoracic area. And they do not do your neck. Okay? They do the femoral neck, which is in your hip, but they don't do your neck. So the femoral neck is the next section down, and this shows, and that is in your thigh, your femur, so that's up in your hip bone, and this shows a minus 1.6 score, and it's uh, osteopenia. So that has just dropped down the threshold into the osteopenia range. The total hip, which is the broader area of that hip joint, when they look at that kind of big picture of the hip, was normal. Now we go to the right, femoral neck is also minus 1.6 and also osteopenia. So just that one area that bridges between the two parts of the hip is a weaker point, but the total hip itself, the density was normal. And then the right total hip and right total mean normal. So those, those scores show osteopenia in the femoral neck, but the rest of the hip and the lumbar spine are normal. Now the next thing here is the FRAX score. And the FRAX score is, it answers a series of questions and calculates based on some statistics, how likely I am to have a fracture in the next 10 years. And the major osteoporotic fracture score is 7.7%. And uh, for 10 years of having a hip fracture, my risk is 0.7%. So these are really good numbers for a postmenopausal female uh, and late 50s. So this is a very reasonable score at this point. Now, the next thing to look at, and this is what I really want you to pay attention to, because when we look at change from one year, one test to, an, to another, we're looking for, is this change really significant? Does it really mean anything in the context of this test? So looking at the uh, AP spine here, it shows comparing the June 21st to August 25th. So these are the two different times that I had it. And the top line shows a 0.8% and that is an increase. And the next one on the left total hip, it shows in that comparison a 2.9% increase. And on the right total hip, it shows a 1.2% decrease. So there's a minus sign in front of that one. So that means that the bone density score went down there. But is this truly meaningful? Well, here's what I want you to look at. So let's go down to the next couple of lines. And down here, it says least or LSC for total hip. LSC means least significant change. And for this machine, this is rated on this machine where I was tested, it is 0 0.27 grams per centimeter square. That is the amount of change that needs to happen for it to actually be considered meaningful. How do I measure this? So I'm going to, so that is for the total hip. So I'm going to go to the total hip, left total hip score and the number 0.858 is the grams per centimeter square score. So I'm going to subtract my 2021 score that's 0 0.834. I'm going to subtract that from 0 0.858, my 2024 score. And for that, I get a, a score of 0 0.024. And 0 0.024 is less than 0 0.027. So that means to me that my change of 2.9% is not enough 
to be considered statistically significant for this machine on this day. So that was not enough of a change for me to say, woohoo, I gained almost 3%. I did not. But for that same reason, my loss of 1.2% on the other hip, since it's even a smaller number, we know is not significant enough to say that I lost bone at that level either. So the overall picture of this report is that it's stable, that there has been stable change in my bone density in three years. And that to me is a huge victory. It's exactly what I was hoping for because the statistics tell us that postmenopausal women will lose one to 2% a year every year. So that is a significant change that I did not have occur. I did not see bone loss of one to 2% each year. So then again, this was three years difference between these, these tests. So a stable score is very, very meaningful to me. I'm really, really happy with that. I want to continue to maintain that. I'm not overly concerned with increasing bone mass, but I'd like to keep as much right where it is as possible. So when we look at those percentages up or down, we have to look at that LSC number and do just a little bit of math and calculate, did we really see a change that is meaningful for us? Now, the other thing in this context, I have two DEXA scores. Now, the first one, I don't know how long those scores had been like that. I have no reference point to know when was bone loss occurring and when was it not occurring. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if it was stable at that point or not. Uh, I, I tend to think that I got some benefit when I began hormone replacement therapy more than 10 years ago, but most of the research I read that that plateau is around four years of about building bone and how that helps, but you also still need to be providing the right stimulus and the right nutrition for that to really have an adequate impact. That is just one part of a comprehensive plan. So I don't know when the bone loss was occurring or how long it's been stable. I don't have enough context for that with only two tests. I don't know what my peak bone mass might have been in my 20s because we don't test that. So, you know, that's one of the factors as well. So what did I do? Well, I had been taking low, low dose hormone replacement therapy for more than 10 years. So I do know that that has a protective effect on my bones. But I also was very surprised to know that I had osteopenia in my femoral neck. So I took some very deliberate action in the last three years. And the first year was probably mostly research. And then the action part was really probably the last two years. And so I really took a deep dive into the types of exercises that make a difference. And I did them. I began to progressively load my body to learn different types of lifts and to lift heavier than I've ever lifted in my life. And I felt like at this phase in my bone health journey that that was a really safe place for me to start. I did a lot of lifting and at 57, I can absolutely say I feel stronger than I've ever felt. So doing the right types of strength training, impact training and power training were very much a part of my program. I also started to incorporate my own posture exercises based on what I was learning in bone fit and other programs that are, that are bone health related exercise. Uh, exercises. So I began to really emphasize the exercise portion of bone health and really the types of exercise that have the biggest bang for your buck and your time. Uh, and I do think that that made a tremendous difference. And I sure know that my body has felt better by doing that as well. So that was two to three times a week. And I also really optimized my nutrition. So I was looking to get, make sure I had enough protein at every meal getting enough wide variety of plants. I try to get all my calcium through food, whether it's through yogurt or hard cheeses. Uh, I don't drink milk, so I would do uh, almond milk or coconut milk or other fortified milks. Um, I, I really try to get all my calcium through food. I do not take a calcium supplement at all. Um, I do take a multivitamin, I take magnesium, uh, I take vitamin D at a relatively low dose, and I have my vitamin D checked on a regular basis to make sure that I'm not exceeding safe limits there at all. Uh, I take things to help reduce inflammation like curcumin and fish oil or eat fish on a regular basis to help reduce inflammation for those omega-3 fatty acids that are really, really supportive for that reason. Uh, and I really looked at the things to reduce or eliminate sugar, salt, 
alcohol, processed foods. I was not a big processed foods person for quite a number of times, but I really looked at how do we really reduce that intake and eat whole foods, plant forward nutrition in a very kind of Mediterranean style uh, diet. But optimizing protein was a really big part of the change I made in the last two years uh, to make sure that that was happening at consistent levels day in, day out. All right, so this is what I did. I really work on these principles in my Brick House Bones uh, program, both teaching really how to optimize nutrition and how to do the right types of exercises. I think it's important in context to note that not everyone can come in and start an exercise program at the level I, I did. You know, I really feel very, very fortunate that I, I did catch this early and I was in a position to begin to train um, much harder and feel confident doing that. But there are ways with specific guidance that we can really build strength and vitality in our bodies. And one of the things that I really want to see and I want to provide hope for people is that you can have hope to keep your world big, to keep it you know, your options for the things that you love to do and enjoy to do with the people that you like to share that with continue to be a big part of your life. There can be so much fear around an osteoporosis diagnosis. And once fractures occur, that fear is really very real because it is life altering to have a fracture. So I wanna create as much support and optimism and resources for you to help know how to find your strength, how to do it as safely as possible in the context of your life. If you find this information helpful and valuable, please share this with others. I'm trying to provide as much free content as possible for you. And I'd be really, really grateful if you subscribe and you'd share this with someone else that you care about or that you think would really appreciate the information. All right, thanks. We'll see you next time.